the Madman. Welcome to the second to last card review of The Witchwood. This one covers all of the ones that were revealed on the stream, starting with Cinderstorm. Three mana deal five damage randomly split among all enemies. It's like Arcane Missile, except it costs two more mana and deals two more damage. Random damage tends to be bad. Arcane Missile tends to be bad. It's really bad. Curio Collector, five mana, four, four. Whenever you draw a card, gain plus one, plus one. It synergizes with the new Book of Spectres card. Unlike Daring Reporter, you can play the card and then immediately draw with it. Now, for a card to be good at five mana, it probably needs to be something like a six, six, so. It's tough to play the Curio Collector exactly on the turn that you're going to draw two cards. Uh, and it's tough for a 5 mana 4 4 to survive to pass it back to you so you can draw a card. It's pretty easily a bad card. You can play this uh, after you've played your Aluneth, and then you play your 5 mana 7 7, but boy, is it bad to count on having a card that's only good after you play your 6 mana legendary weapon. Honor gets a dragon! 5 mana 3 7 Carrion Drake, battle cry if a minion died this turn, gain poisonous. I think it's good to look at a card and see its optimistic side first, and in this case it'd be asking, is a 5 mana 3 7 poisonous a good card? And I think a 5 mana 3 7 poisonous would see quite a lot of play. My Exna didn't see play at all, but that was a 6 mana 2 8. Uh, at 1 mana less, cards get quite a lot better. This card, you could see how it could easily 2 for 1. And I think for a mid-range deck, getting the poisonous condition, it's a little bit difficult, but it's not that difficult. So I suppose the only question is, is a mid-range slash control slightly later game plan, Hunter, going to exist? And to do that, we are going to look at all the cards and build decks and theory craft, but for now, just stating the options. Valbrood Skitter is the hunter version of hard removal at 5 mana 1 3 poisonous rush and a beast. It is like assassinate except it's stopped by taunt. With only 3 health, it doesn't really uh, manage to survive against much, but if you send it against a 1 or 2 attack minion, uh, it can still survive and be a poisonous minion and still a threat, so in some ways better than assassinate. Realistically probably not going to see play. Palin gets a new secret. Hidden Wisdom. After your opponent plays three cards in a turn, draw two cards. We've seen the Rat Trap from the Hunter, and I proclaim that card as often two mana do nothing. Now the 6-6 six, six was a bigger deal than drawing two cards as well. The benefit Hidden Wisdom has going for it is that this card can be pulled from the Bellman, but why try to put this secret in your deck when there are three better ones? Noble Sacrifice, Redemption, and Repentance. Maybe you just need that one extra secret in the deck. But I think in your typical deck without secret synergy, this is kind of like the rat trap, and that is one mana, do nothing. Kind of limit your opponent to just playing two cards a turn, but that's not really a big limitation. While the echo mechanic does encourage three cards to be played, I don't really think much of the echo mechanic as I have seen all of the cards now. Some Echo cards are good, but all in all, I think Echo came at a little bit of too much of a price premium in terms of mana to see mainstream play. Ghostly Charger! 5 mana, 3, 4, Paladin, Divine Shield, Rush. So it compares with Arjun Commander. Can't go face this Ghostly Charger, but because of the Divine Shield, you often want to control the attack, and you would often hit a minion with your Argent Commander. Argent Commander saw a little bit of play when there were fewer cards in the game. Uh, right now we have not as many cards in the game because three sets are just about to rotate out of standard. It does have a lot of health, so it could be played on five, help in removing an opponent's minion or even entirely remove it by itself and then just curve into Spike Ridge Steed, which makes this a 5-10. Not too shabby. Prince Liam, the Paladin Legendary, 5 mana 5 5, Battle Cry, transform all one cost cards in your deck into legendary minions. The theory behind this card is to play it at 5 when all of your one cost cards are pretty useless at that point. But the main problem is that if you're playing secrets in your deck and the secrets do get transformed, uh, you kind of want them to stay in your deck to be pulled out from the Bellman. Furthermore, Call to Arms often pulls out all of the one cost cards from your deck already. So Prince Liam will often end up just being a 5 mana 5 5 I think. With maybe a minor bonus, maybe it's like a backup plan in case your Bellman doesn't get drawn. I think that's the most likely case for this. It's the backup plan. 
Priest gets a Divine Hymn, 2 mana, restore 6 health to all friendly characters. It's power creep on Holy Light, which is fine because Holy Light was terrible. My big reservation on why this card is not good is because Binding Heal doesn't see any play. And Binding Heal for half the cost, restores 5 to a friendly minion and 5 to yourself. But do you really need to restore that much health to all friendly characters? Circle of Healing costs 2 fewer, and it's... Deals four to everything. I mean, heals everything for four. Or deals four to everything with Akunai Soul Priest, which Divine Him can't do. I think this card is overrated. It's kind of just a win more card. And we have Squashling! Two mana, two, one. Echo, Battle Cry, Restore two health. It's Voodoo Doctor, except with Echo. To be fair, I believe at one mana, uh, this card would have been OP OP. Because Voodoo Doctor is not that bad a card. Like, I'm sure people would play a two mana Voodoo Doctor. 2 mana, 2, 1, restore 2 health, draw a card. Now the problem with Squashling is the card that you're drawing is always going to be Squashling. And that is a bad card, and you have to play it immediately, otherwise it goes away. Can Squashling ever be played for 2 mana? No, it would be terrible. Can Squashling be played for 4 mana? Kind of, yes, but it would still be bad. It would still be really bad. Uh, you can split up the health, at least. So can it be played on 6 mana? I think that's probably the most likely mana that it would be played on in combination with Akunai Soul Priest, but... I still think that's too weak. Night Scale Matriarch, 7 mana, 4, 9, Dragon. Whenever a friendly minion is healed, summon a 3, 3, Whelp. Is this the dragon that's coming to replace the dragons that are getting rotated out of Dragonid Operative? And another Spite Historian. Is this the missing link? Also worth noting that this particular one is good with Lady in White, which is a very reasonable replacement to a few of the rotations that are going out. So there are archetypes out there already, which do use dragons. Uh, control Priest does have dragons, and this just screams a Control Priest card. And Control Priest, I think, is likely to put in Lady in White with Primordial Drake, with Ysera, with Nightscale Matriarch. Well, I don't see this as a replacement for the dragons in the Spiteful Summoner deck, which requires more tempo-y dragons. And this one is no good for tempo, it's uh, usually just a 7 mana 13 statted minion, which is worse than War Golem in some ways, which is a 14 stat golem. This does have better stat distribution, since you want your uh, card with a big effect to be at 9 health. Very, very tough to remove. The only question is, is it too slow? It doesn't do anything the turn it comes in, unless you are spending 9 mana to immediately heal something, or if you're running a card like Circle of Healing with it, which is eh, just how deep can you get with it. Quartz Elemental, 5 mana 5 8, can't attack while damaged. 5 mana 5 6, Pit Fighter was not strong enough to see play, but you put enough stats on a minion, and then it'll start to see play. There's not r that big a downside to it, and I know people laugh when I say it, but if they're dealing damage to it, that usually requires a resource on their side. If they're using their hero power to damage it, then you use your hero back and you're even, and you have a 5 mana 5 8, basically. If they're using a minion with 3 or more attack to attack into it, and you heal, then yeah, they stopped your Quartz Elemental from attacking, but they already used the resource and take seppukuing on it, and your Quartz Elemental can still go online eventually. The stat line is really strong. You don't really need any other cards to help activate the Elemental, which is the reason why I feel like this is pretty good. Might be a contender for a card to put into Spiteful Summoner decks. A minion with a really strong stat line. If a Baku deck, which is the odd deck, uh, improves your hero power ends up being good, then Quartz Elemental will certainly be a card to put in that deck. Healing for 4 will really activate the Quartz Elemental easy peasy. Rogue gets Cutthroat Buccaneer, 3 mana 2, 4 combo, give your weapon plus 1 attack. So Naga Corsair is rotating out which was probably better since that's 4 mana 5 4, so more mana, 3 more stats, no prerequisite. Now that said though, if you're running a Kingsbane deck, you probably still want to put a bunch of the weapon buffs, so now your Corsair rotates out, you might still have to put in the Cutthroat Buccaneer after all. Uh, zap! Exciting new Shaman card at 0 mana. Deal 2 damage to a minion overload 1. Bad Backstab might be a first impression, but Backstab is an insane card which you would put into almost every single deck in Hearthstone. One mana deal 2 to minions uh, has been played, with Smite often being used to deal damage to minions in between or Arcane Shot and the Spell Hunter. Good card to combine with the Shaman Bog Champ guy, since you can immediately just gain a minion the turn you play Mr. Bog Champ. 
And it's a long road to recovery for Shaman, but hey, more good cards is good. Shaman also gets Blazing Invocation. One mana, discover a Battlecry minion. So initially it seems like there are two types of Battlecry cards that might be good for Shaman. The first is some sort of Elemental Shaman, which has a lot of good uh, Elementals with Battlecries in it. Such as, but not limited to Kalamos, which you do want another copy of. Why would you not just run the Battlecry minion itself instead of paying one mana for the middleman? Well, maybe some cards are worth paying an extra mana for. Maybe some are worth paying the extra mana for to run three of in your deck, like maybe Fire Elemental. Maybe the flexibility is good. So, Elemental is a possibility. The other one is this crazy new archetype that could come about with a Shutterwalk type deck. So in its best case, it'll be something along the lines of Rogue has played cards like this before, but that was mainly used in order to combo with cards. Uh, in the worst case, it becomes something like, I know a guy from Warrior, which was not really played even in the Warrior quest deck. Because one mana to pay for flexibility is just sometimes too much mana to pay. Shaman gets an Echo card, Ghost Light Angler 2 mana 2 2. Murloc is a really interesting tag for this because you can use this Murloc to help complete your Murloc Shaman quest. That said, the call in the finishers is rotating out, which was 4 mana summon 4 Murlocs, so I don't think Ghost Light Angler is really going to be good enough to replace that. So what else is Gold Ghost Light Angler good for? Well, with Hagatha, you could draw up to 5 random Shaman spells with your Ghost Light Angler. It's bad at all the mana costs, but it's not bad enough that actually the flexibility might have some viability here. So mainly due to Hagatha, there's just some small chance of Ghost Light Angler, but I think by the time you get to Hagatha, you won't need the value that the Ghost Light Angler drawing you five cards will be. So I don't see it. Earthen Might! What a fantastic card for Shaman. Give a minion plus two plus two. If it's an elemental, add a random elemental to your hand. Like Mark of Yasharaj for the Druid Beast, except for Shamans and Elementals. I don't know if this card is going to be good enough to push Elemental Shaman, but it seems to be the most promising archetype, which is to have some elementals in Shaman and probably run Earthen Might in the deck then. And it's a card that boosts the strength, but I'm not sure if the strength of Elemental Shaman is just strong enough. And finally, big game changer for Shamans, Shudderwalk. 9 mana 6-6 six, six, battle cry repeat all other battle cries from cards you played this game, targets chosen randomly, also in a random order as demonstrated on stream. So Shutterwalk is a very very interesting card, big finisher I think for shamans, not unlike Yogg except unlike Yogg it is pretty much always positive for you. I think in a deck like this you play cards that are just good death, uh, good battle cries. Serenai Chain Gang isn't bad by itself, it's just a standard 4 mana taunt, but when you play your Serenai Chain Gang before your Shutterwalk, then suddenly you get two Shutterwalks instead of one. Kind of like you ought to accept it just boosts your board often. But besides that, there's so many things that have good battle cries. Babbling Book, Frog Apprentice, dude. There's Stonehill Defender, which is always good. Rumble to repeat your stuff to return this to your hand. Zola to get a copy of Shutterwalk back into your hand. The Hagatha battle cry also works. Bunch of elementals have battle cries. Servant of Kalamos will discover you a random elemental. And unfortunately, future Shutterwalks you play will not double the battle cry amount since it does not count the previous Shutterwalks battle cries. Quite possibly powerful enough that some sort of control shaman that stalls out until you get the pure value of Shutterwalk and possibly adding more Shutterwalks to your hand could actually be a thing and not just a meme. Could also just be a meme. Warrior gets the missing link of the 3 mana 3-3 three, three rush, Rabid Worgen. Well, it doesn't look like much, but with the Woodcutter's Axe. And the Rabid Worgen is a charging 5-4 on turn 3, which will usually kill the opponent's turn 3 play and still survive. I don't really think it's good enough to fit the rush package, but it's not as bad as it looks, I think is my point. It does seem to only be good if you have an axe available, and for a card to only be good if that's the case, it's a little bit... Not so good. On to the neutrals, we've got Baleful Banker. 2 mana 2 2, battle cry, choose a friendly minion, shuffle a copy of it into your deck. The stream featured this card of Shutterwalk, since you could actually just have the Baleful Banker have the battle cry go off, and then you play the Shutterwalk, and then the Baleful Banker 
puts a Shudderwalk into your deck, but I figure why skip the middle man, just go with Zola instead. This is just a bit too slow, often just a 2 mana 2-2 two two, since you have to still draw your minion after it's been shuffled into your deck. It's just meh. Vicious Scalehide! 2 mana 1-3. Could be a bridge card for Countess Ashmore since it has both the lifesteal and rush tag, but I'm afraid that it's just uh, too low in stat belly to actually be any good. 2 mana deal 1? No thanks. Can you buff it? Yes, but still meh. Marsh Drake, an aggressive dragon, 3 mana 5, 4. Bellcry summon a 2 1 poisonous Drake Slayer for your opponent. So obviously, you don't want to play this on an empty board, and you have no plan to remove the Drake Slayer, because otherwise, the Drake Slayer will slay your Drake. You need to have something on the board that can deal 1 damage. Not really that good to use a 2 mana hero power on it uh, with Fire Blast or with Shapeshift, since that'll be a 5 mana 5 4. Potion of Madness is great with it, but Potion of Madness is rotating out. But yeah, turn 2 dagger, turn 3, 5, 4, clear the 2, 1. Seems like a reasonable start for Tempo Rook. Tangle for Mystic! 3 mana, 3, 4, it's a lot like Spell Slinger from the past in that the Battle Cry adds a random 2 cost minion to each player's hand. Uh, unlike Spell Slinger, the 2 cost minion should be less of an impact, so you could use it for some sort of milling deck. If your opponent's at 9 cards, you give them a 2 cost minion in their hand and they draw a card and they mill it and they're sad. It does give you an even cost card, so you could use this on turn three to have an option on turn four to play your two cost minion along with a hero power. That seems to be the main point of this uh, card. Bench Clang Thug. Three mana, three, three. After your hero attacks, give this minion plus one, plus one. Natural fit into Rogue. Probably don't use the dagger on turn two. Play the Hench Clan Thug, attack on turn three. Attack on turn four. Uh, Hench Clan Thug could be attacking 5-5. Five, five. 3 mana 4-4 four, four with no drawback is a great card. I mean, it has the prerequisite of setting up your dagger, which is a drawback, but it, it's a growing 4-4 four, four too. Good card for any class that can consistently get a 1 or 2 mana weapon off. Uh, not sure it's good enough in the warrior deck. It is a 3-drop, which it could use alongside the Frothing Berserker, but the problem is you would have to get your Woodcutter's Axe on too. So it seems only consistent enough to run in Rogue. It leads to dreams of maybe an Otter Rogue, where you're playing your dagger on turn two and it's a 2-2 dagger. Walnut Sprite! 3 mana 3-3? Three, three. Echo. Given that it's bad at all mana costs, uh, like really bad, it seems to just be your usual filler card. I think they allocated a good piece of art to this filler card. It like makes fun of itself. <laughs> I will point out the combo of summoning portal into six walnut sprites on turn 10 though. That is a 1822 stat line on turn 10. And you think the card was useless? Well, my Karibo, when multiplied by six, is mighty. Unpowered Steam Bot, four mana zero nine taunt. It's a upgrade on Mogushin Warden. Turns the one attack of Mogushin into two more health which tends to be a great trade. Pretty much meant for the Lady in White deck, but a card that's not good by itself is probably not good enough to put in the Lady in White deck. But yes, this card was played as a 4 mana 9-9 taunt on stream, so there's the potential of it. But no, that's counting too much on playing the Lady in White before you draw this hunk of junk. Darkmire Moonkin. This is an aggressively bad card, a 7 mana 2-8. Spell damage plus 2. I was talking with my stream about what would be a fair stat line for this card to make it good? And it came up with something along the lines of 4 8 or 5 8, maybe. A uh, card compares with Malagos, which is for two more mana, you get two more attack and four more health and three more spell damage. You also compare it with Evolved Kobold, which had four mana, had two spell damage, and was actually played in order to sling a massive amount of damage at the opponent's face. face. But. Moonkin just costs so much mana that you can't really do much spell damage afterwards. So yeah, this one's aggressively bad. And finally, we've got Wormguard. 7 mana. Battle cry for holding a dragon, gain plus 1 attack and taunt. That 411 taunt for 7 mana compares with the Druid Ancient of War, which is a 510 taunt. 411 taunt is probably a better stat line than a 510 taunt. Uh, one of the very few cards in Hearthstone with 11 health. Very unique. And with Lady in White, which could be played in a control deck with dragons. This is a 12-11 with Taunt. Now Wormguard does compete with the Nightscale Matriarch for the seven mana slot. So that would be another reason against Nightscale Matriarch, I suppose, just because you can't run too many seven mana cards. 
Seems like the Worm Guard is just uh, quite a bit better. Not a dragon itself, but takes advantage of the dragons. All right, there you have it. They managed to put in an incredible amount of new cards into their deck matches. Stay tuned for the conclusion of all of the cards. Uh, it's gonna be the remaining cards that were released after the stream. The card dump cards, so to say, but there are still some gems in there.